I am Gary Freeman and I have over 30 years experience in the pharmaceutical and medical device industry. We've developed this webinar as an introductory course to discuss the basic concept of good clinical practice or GCP as we affectionately refer to it in the industry. Its common elements include the 13 principles as we've identified in the ICH, International Conference on Harmonization Guidance. These are principles that are used globally for all of our clinical trials, whether they be drug or device, and they're embraced by the FDA in our law for the United States studies. The law in the U.S. is the CFR, as you probably know, Code of Federal Regulations. Nowhere in the code do they actually give the principles of good clinical practice. They've relied upon the ICH to do that in the itemization um, in Section 2 of the ICH E6. And FDA has stated that they agree with all of those principles. And as we go through those later today, you're going to see that they all make good sense for a good clinical study. And there would be nowhere in the Code of Federal Regulations that they would say that they do not agree. So although they do not list them as such, they've agreed that all of those are key principles that they would look for if they're inspecting a study as well. So. We're going to look at the learning objectives first that we've set forth for today. And please chat to me if I hit on anything that you're not familiar with. We have many abbreviations and acronyms in the industry, and I'll be happy to decipher any of them that might not be familiar to you. Let's look at the learning objectives that we have set out. The first thing we're going to talk about is what is the goal of good clinical practice? Why do we need it? We're always so regulated. Do we really need this set of rules on how to operate clinical trials? Don't we all know how to do that in our organizations? So why do we, why do we need something called good clinical practice at all? We're going to then look at the various regulations that will affect us, whether they be drug, device, or biologic. We've covered all in this seminar because we very often have people in all three categories. We'll concentrate yours into where you're more uh, interested, but they're very similar across all three groups. We'll talk about how they're related to good clinical practice. Then we're going to recognize the mutual accountability and the responsibilities of everybody that's involved in the clinical trial. As sponsors, we have to be responsible for everybody because it's our IND or our IDE. It's our NDA and it's our PMA, depending if we're drugs or devices. So we're the major stakeholder here, so we are going to look at how accountable we need to be, but how accountable the other stakeholders are as well, and where that overlap exists. We as sponsors own the IDE and the PMA, so we want to be watching to make sure everybody else is doing their share here, because otherwise we may not get marketing approval for our device or our drug, as the situation might be. So we'll look at the responsibilities for the investigator, because we need to make sure that they're doing their role. We'll look at the responsibilities of the IRB, Institutional Review Board, or overseas it's typically called an ethics committee, and the regulatory authority. Obviously that would be the FDA in the United States. It would be any number of regulatory authorities in international countries. All the stakeholders have very similar responsibilities no matter where they are in the world. And lastly, we're going to learn to apply those 13 principles of good clinical practice. Although they're identified as ICH GCP, they're certainly followed by the FDA here in the States as well. So that we can develop quality research studies that will ensure compliance. If we have compliance and the product actually works and it's safe, then the regulatory authority has no option but to authorize us to market that product. So we want to make sure that we're following the rules. Think about what is the mission of the FDA? The mission of the FDA is to protect the right safety and well-being of subjects. So that's obviously going to be one of the pieces of good clinical practice. How do we protect those rights of the patients or subjects? The second mission that they have as a regulatory governing body is to ensure compliance so that the data that we have collected is credible to allow them to assess that safety and efficacy of the product that's being tested and to allow us then to market that product. So they use this GCP umbrella to say, have you followed good clinical practices in your study? That's the directive the inspector would have if he or she were to come either to your location as a sponsor or to a site that has conducted the study for you. 
What is that good clinical practice then? What are they looking for? Well, it's a standard. It's an international, scientific, and ethical standard of business. Everything we've done on the clinical trial. It is defined in ICH in their glossary, section 124. And it's an overriding definition in the Code of Fell Regulations, which is Title 21 for the FDA of the Code of Fell Regulations. It's going to be a standard for how we do everything on our clinical trial, right from the very beginning. How did we design that study? So they're looking here at our preclinical work. They're looking here at does it really lead us into our clinical study? Have we done everything we could do to protect the rights of the subject before we start that very first clinical trial in humans?